How are you everybody? Jonathan here. And in this video, I'm going to answer a question that I actually got earlier today from Jenny Libs. And she asks, uh, what can she expect as a new trainer in a big box gym? And I would like to offer some advice on that because I know based on a lot of the promises that the personal training certifications make, they say, you know, if you get certified with XYZ certification, average trainer earns $50,000 per year. So you may have the assumption that you walk into the gym, you get hired, a bunch of clients are just dropped into your lap or because you have a certification, everybody wants to train with you. And that may not necessarily be the case. All right. So you may have to put a lot of front end work in. There is, however, another side of the coin where you have to understand that I have not worked for every single franchise of big box gyms. And if you've worked for a big box gym and you'd like to share your experience, I definitely encourage you to share it below. Um, as I understand that Equinox Gym, for instance, has an excellent training program. I've never met a trainer that did not like working at Equinox or as other gyms. I've heard like LA Fitness didn't have the best reputation for trainers starting out or uh, a regional franchise here is uh, Retro didn't have the best uh, reputation, but it's all subjective. So I'm gonna give you my experience as a personal trainer in my first couple of weeks, and I'm going to lean a little bit more on the pessimistic side, just so that you're prepared for anything. I hope that the gym that you work for has a great personal training director that invests time into teaching you with sales as well as training, and they have a very broad and very detailed training program for new trainers, but that may not be the case. So I want to make sure that you can start off well, hit the ground running, and then start to see success early. But before I do, if you have not yet, make sure to click on that link up there and subscribe to my newsletter as I send out short articles every Monday on how to see success in the fitness industry. If you just haven't stumbled upon this video, make sure to click on the YouTube icon below and subscribe to this channel as I make videos every Wednesday based on questions that I get the most. And as always, if you've already subscribed to both my newsletter into the YouTube channel. Thank you very much for your support. And if you find the information in this video helpful, please click on the like button below the video player because every like that I get helps this channel. All right. So I'm going to talk about my uh, experience. They were privately owned franchises. The first one was a powerhouse gym, a little bit more well known. And the second one was a uh, signature fitness. So um, with the powerhouse gym, given that they're both privately owned, they make their own rules. All right. So when I first started, I actually got referred onto this gym by a friend whose brother was a training director. So I guess he took me a little bit more under his wing, but the same thing remains that I came in and I had to do a lot of shadowing. I remember having to put in 10 and 11 hour days, you know, just sitting around the gym, shadowing other trainers, to try to learn their style. In a lot of cases, big box gym has high turnover, which means trainers come and go uh, fairly often. So when a new trainer is brought on, sometimes there's a fair amount of clients that need to be trained. So you need to get up to speed quickly so that you can take on these clients who have existing contracts and need to get their sessions in. So you may have to follow the head trainer or one of the better trainers and learn how to train their style so the client doesn't have to deal with that much change. In my second experience as a personal trainer working at um, Signature, it was much of the same thing. Um, I had to do a lot of shadowing. I shadowed the head trainer and I was basically to memorize his style. Um, I had to shadow the nutritionist so I can understand how they were going to sell nutrition. And um, the main thing that I have to understand for both gyms is their training packages, because you have to understand that the personal training position is a sales position. All right. And you can't take it that personally if you're head trainer or if the training director, whatever they call them, tends to focus mainly on sales because in terms of the chain of command, it's the owner who speaks to the sales manager, who speaks to the personal training director, who speaks to you. So they're always trying to drive numbers, 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 numbers. It's one reason why I think trainers get a little bit jaded because gyms, it seems, or at least it seemed to me while I was working there, didn't care as much about a personal training client, you know, seeing great results as much as they cared about that training client buying more packages. All right. So you are going to have to get well versed in the sales process. Perhaps your gym has their own sales process that they use in order to get clients. And that's where they're probably going to put a lot of the emphasis on their training. All right. If you have a gym that has a different training style, again, I definitely recommend that you put that information in the comment section below. Um, in terms of getting clients, uh, in powerhouse, when you first started, what they did was they handed you a list 
And the first thing that you have to learn how to do is comp sessions, complimentary sessions. They may be backed up with that. That may be another reason why you were hired because they have a lot of new people coming in. A lot of the trainers are booked and they need somebody else to give the complimentary sessions to all the new patrons that join the gym. So it's your job to call all the new clients and then give them their free sessions. Depending on your gym, they'll offer you floor hours or comp hours for you to give them one or two sessions. And then your goal with each comp session is not just to familiarize the patron with the gym, but to in some way convince them to sign on to personal training or to get them uh, interested so that you can pass them on to the salespeople. So it also depends on whether or not you have to do the sale or whether the salespeople have to do the sale. So there are a number of things that dictate how the gym operates, but the main thing that you have to do is that you have to make sure that you are engaging in terms of how to get people in front of you. So if you're not handed a list, and being handed a list is actually a pretty good thing, Otherwise, you're at the mercy of the salespeople, whether or not they like you, or you just have to walk the floor and then just approach random people. All right now, I have a number of how to sell personal training videos, and I definitely recommend that you watch all of them. Um, I will be redoing personal training sales uh, number two through number eight, I believe I have, because I feel that I can explain them in a more succinct fashion. So keep your eyes peeled on that for the updated ones. The old ones will work well for you, but they're just a little bit long-winded. All right. Um, now, in terms of training style, I had no training style when I first, first, first got my job. So I relied heavily on what I had learned through certifications. However, um, you may find that your manager or head personal trainer suggests that you train a certain kind of way. I've always found, and I'll actually make a comp session video uh, separate so that you can master comp sessions. I've always found that it's gonna be good to offer the first comp session one-on-one, -on -one, but it takes time for people to turn over into training. Not everybody is that kind of salesy type of person that can just talk their way into a sale. You kind of need to train your way into a sale. So it's a good idea to be able to offer small group training, so that way you can have an existing small group training class and then bring that patron into that small group training class and let them know, hey, either you can sign up for small group training or if you want the you know, more attention, then you can sign up for the more expensive personal training. So giving them an option is going to be a good idea. Your main goal that I explain in the how to sell personal training video, one video is to ingratiate yourself with as many people that have an effect on um, visibility and sales as possible. So you wanna ingratiate yourself or you wanna figure out who runs the most popular group training class. Um, if possible, you wanna to talk to the group X director to see if you can run a class so you can get in front of people. You want to talk to the salespeople, you wanna get cool with them so that when they do have somebody that walks in, because sometimes patrons walk in and say, I want a gym membership and I want personal training, you want the salesperson to come to you and say, hey, Jonathan, you know, I have so-and-so that wants to train with you. And um, you want to get cool with the front desk as they see people, they talk to people. And when people want personal training, they may ask some of the front desk employees who's the best trainer to work with. So there are a lot of things to consider, um, whether or not your gym is going to offer um, the training, um, whether or not they focus on sales, whether or not the head personal trainer is going to be very hands-on, or if you're going to have to make calls. So these are questions that you want to ask in the very beginning. Am I responsible for sales? How much calling am I gonna to have to do? How many people do you expect me to pull off the floor? What percentage of clients do you think I should be able to get on my own versus hand it to me from the sales department? And how can I be a better salesman based on the packages and products that you have? If you ask that question to the head manager, it's not saying that they're gonna be the most helpful, but at least they'll give you an idea of what you need to do. And then from there, if you have any questions, you know, that's what this channel is for, to make sure that you can navigate your life in a big box gym as easily as possible. Now, I mentioned the small group training. Um, I definitely recommend that you get well-versed in learning how to train multiple people at the same time. If you've never checked out my Dumbbells to Dollars course, it is dedicated toward helping trainers learn how to teach in groups um, and learning how to market yourself, learning how to monitor nutrition, and eventually learning how to start your own business so that you can leave the gym and make more money. So if you ever wanted more information, it is the best resource any personal trainer can get to see success in the fitness industry. I definitely recommend that you click on that image right there to learn more about the Dumbbells to Dollars course. But that's about it. Um, I can't give you a direct answer because every gym is different, but I can give you some questions and some things to look for when you start off in your gym 
that you can see success. I hope you take that to heart. Make sure to check out my personal training sales or how to sell personal training videos and that will be of great help to you. Now, any personal trainer out there, if you work for 24 hour, if you work for Crunch, LA Fitness, Equinox, um, whatever the case may be, and if you wanna chime in with your experience, Planet Fitness. If you wanna chime in with your experience, it would be very helpful to the other trainers in this channel. Um, so click on the comment section below and let me know or let us know what your experience was like. Try to keep it general in terms of structure because you have to understand if your personal training manager was a jerk, that doesn't necessarily mean that the structure of what to expect is wrong. So focus mainly on structure and I think it'll help a lot of people. But that's about it. I'll be back next week. I have a lot of videos to go over. I'm going to go over how to make a great comp session next week. So stay tuned. I'll be back as long as you remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe, stress levels low, get rest. Don't slap anybody. Love your clients. They'll love you back. I'll see y'all tomorrow or the next day. And you have a good one.